Hello to all the postables. This is so exciting. And all the Hallmarkies. We are the Hallmarkies podcast, and we are here to talk about the movie we, I, some of us thought we'd never get, but we have <laughs> since it delivered a tale of three letters. Very exciting. I am film critic Rachel Wagner, and Jess is here. Hello, everybody. It's good how to be you? back on. Yeah. How are you doing? I've been good. I've been keeping busy trying to keep my garden alive in the summer heat. <laughs> yes. Partially <laughs> successful. Some fail. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> What's your most successful crop that you've planted? Um, probably our pumpkins right now. Oh, yeah. That's we, good. We, we failed last year. We put them in the wrong spot. They got like too much shade. Okay. Um, the soil was bad. But this year we actually are going to have some pumpkins. So that's exciting. Yeah. That's good. I have a black thumb, so I admire <laughs> I admire the attempt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very good. Well, this is so exciting. We got new sign seal delivered movie. Uh, were you always pretty confident that we'd get another one or were you pretty skeptical? Uh, I don't know that I've, yeah, I wouldn't say I've been confident because it's always ended. I feel like we've almost had two endings. Before I feel so too. With, to the altar and the vows because they ended in a way that it could be. Yeah, the nice conclusion of a series, but Toasting. of course, postables. Postables yeah. will not accept that ever. We we need the series to continue <laughs> and the stories to continue, and they fought so hard. And Hallmark did listen. It took them like yeah. three years, but <laughs> I'm just amazed that all four are even available. You yeah. know, like I mean, it 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 is kind of incredible with how talented they all are. That you know that they haven't started other series and other you know like it, to keep four people still available is is right is pretty amazing and in some of the supporting cast as well yeah like mm-hmm. santiago and then great right. person were both back and mm-hmm. yeah it's yeah. definitely a blessing that they are all able to get back together like yeah that. yeah well let's dive in we're going to talk about it sign seal delivered a tale of three letters and this one was directed by linda lisa hater we love her she's so sweet and uh writers uh brandy harkonnen and martha williamson and of course, got our all our cast uh, back. Our main four: Eric Mabius, Chris Booth, Jan K. Crystal Lowe, and Jeff Gustafsson. And the summary is: the Postables are back, identifying the intended recipients of a trio of dead letters, which have a surprising personal impact on all of them. So, overall, what did you think about this one? Where does it fall for you? This movie surprised me a lot. So, a, I avoided like most of the previews like I didn't want to know anything beforehand I knew a little because of you know the podcast um but I try to avoid everything and I don't know what I expected of this movie but it wasn't what I expected Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. I didn't expect so much tension in the movie yeah um and I definitely didn't expect the pregnancy announcement I'm sure there was a whole group of people who did um so it definitely surprised me in a lot of ways and I, I've seen it twice so far. I enjoyed it a lot more on my second viewing because I think I got past like not knowing what to expect. And I really got to sit and dive into like the themes and like the little nuggets of wisdom that Martha put in there. So I enjoyed it overall. I think for people who are married, this movie is definitely really resonated with them yeah. um, and is completely off the charts. But like, you know, someone like myself, single miss an emotional connection a little bit but i could still definitely appreciate what you know the story that was being told yeah there was definitely a side of me that wished i'd i had had cammy or casey on as well you know just yeah. since they're both married uh, from the Vermeer podcast which we i guess we should say like is your guys show that you all do together yes. uh and so you'll be doing a recap probably several yeah. <laughs> we did uh we did a live yesterday that okay. Casey dropped onto youtube um today and i think we're hoping to do i don't know that we're going to recap it anymore but we we started a sub stack for anyone who's listening oh. um which is kind of it's kind of like a blog st- style of thing and i'm hoping we're going to put some articles and maybe start doing some interviews as like kind of in between the, this mm-hmm. one and the next movie cool yeah well we'll try to put all that in the description so if people want to check it out they they can but uh but yeah i think there's probably some truth to it that it's easier to connect with the themes because it's it's always hard in any uh rom-com setting uh to know kind of what do we do now the couples are together both of our main couples here are together what do we do next and they definitely leaned into the conflict you know we got therapists we got everything <laughs> and i can see how that 
would be moving for, you know, especially somebody who is, is married. Um, for me, I mean, I don't think there's a, a bad postables entry. I mean, I think uh, mo- even the worst postables movie is still better than better most than of what else. <laughs> <laughs> but it would, this definitely would be in my lower tier if I okay. was tier ranking them. Uh, it, it just felt very like a filler episode to me. And you, know, you could tell that, okay, they knew they were going to get a second one. And so, and, and maybe part of it is because the last two have felt that sort of like finale feel. There was that energy, you know, kind of, and this one just felt very much like, okay, this is a, this is an episode. This is an entry. Yeah. Well, this one was interesting too, because I wouldn't say it's the only movie, but most of the movies have been letter driven where this one was definitely postable relationship driven. Yeah. And I think that changes the tone a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, and they all felt sort of, this is the probably the one where I think you might be the most lost if you haven't watched the show. Like I think of most of the rest of them are fairly standalone because mm-hmm. like you're saying they, they, you can follow the letter from the beginning to the end. And that's not really the case with this. Yeah. And I think you would, you would miss a lot of appreciation in this one. If you hadn't seen yeah. it, you wouldn't know how far Shane and Oliver have come. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe people who haven't seen it would might get really annoyed with Oliver. Yeah. Yeah. His, his personality is, is quite, you know, black and white, quite rigid, which I love because I am very much like Oliver. So <laughs> when I see him on screen, yeah. like, especially in this movie, I was like with him, like Shane, pick up your shoes, <laughs> please. <laughs> well, in that sense, I, I did kind of relate to it in a way because i do think if i were to get married because i'm 43 and single i think it would be really hard just like little things like that like i'm used to living alone like mm-hmm. i'm used to you know having my shoes wherever the heck i want them you know I think right it would be hard. nobody's gonna tell me otherwise yeah <laughs> i think yeah. that would that would definitely be a big adjustment for sure yeah ho 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 We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. Definitely a big theme in this of that sort of expectation we place on someone else to conform to our way of doing things. Um, and that was something as people who had lived alone for so long that they really had yeah. to, to learn and come to terms with. Yeah. I guess for me, the, the last one, the whole Charlie plot line didn't really work for me in the last one. I just didn't buy that they would take almost ownership, adoptive ship. I don't know what you, what word you call it, but of this person that they had barely met that she would be interested in doing it that i don't know that whole plot line i didn't really buy in the last one and so then they kind of leaned into it in this one so i mean i was kind of hoping oh maybe let's just kind of forget about that because i don't think it it was it really worked and uh and but no they kind of leaned into it this time (laughs) yeah i don't even know if i consider the realism of it i think what i really liked about it the last time um because i really enjoyed the vows was I really like the idea of um, them, like their way of supporting her, like was to literally support her. You know, we think of, like how we can like help like pregnant women or like especially single mothers. I don't know. I just felt like they were mm-hmm. really showing like how you can surround and support a mother. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very sweet, and 
And again, of course, I like Rihanna Fish very much as an actor. So, you know, it's it's fine. But I don't know. I just it was just too much for me. The believability did kind of come into play for me with it that and they'd only known her for like two weeks. (laughs) And uh, so uh, but yeah, I mean, she's back. Pretty much everybody that could be back is back uh, in this. Uh, And we start out uh, Oliver and Shane on their honeymoon and like people are gonna laugh when i say this but this was like pretty racy for hallmark <laughs> i mean they're in like they're they're in like the bed together multiple times through the movie i mean i don't care obviously i'm an adult i can handle this but i was a little bit surprised we were not surprised on that mostly because well i was at work but um casey and cammy did an interview with chris and she said get your ice buckets ready there's gonna be a <laughs> lot of pda <laughs> Okay. And there was. Yeah, there really was. (laughs) There really was. I was like, wow. I mean, the only time that I can remember something like that being in a Hallmark movie was in the Garage Sale Mysteries because she was married in that one. I never, never seen that one. So yeah. So she was married. And so there were a few kind of scenes like that um, in that series. But, uh, but that's the only time I can really think of where you had like coupling scenes. (laughs) (laughs) bedroom scenes <laughs> so that was funny and uh and so we get them he's like oliver is talking up the the british postal museum to his seatmate that was really funny <laughs> and and uh, it turns out i looked it up it's a real thing in london the the british postal museum and uh that uh it was that um yeah, that it's uh, see, but the Postal Museum is a museum run by the Postal Heritage Trust, and it's been around since 2004. There's three sites of it, so that's very fun. And there is also at the Smithsonian, we have our own National Postal Museum. I've never been to it, I've been to most of the other places in the Smithsonian, but I wanted to go to it so bad when I was in DC, like shoot uh i don't know like 2017 or so but it uh-huh. was i was at it doing um i was at like a conference type thing or something but it closed so early that i could never go so it goes mm. like during the day i was always at my like thing and i was like yeah Dang it, i really wanted to go so like when am i gonna be in <laughs> dc again <laughs> next time because my sister lives in virginia so next time i go that way i'll have to check it out because yeah. it's here that uh, <laughs> features vehicles used to deliver mail throughout the history of the usps planes trains automobiles Historical exhibits guide visitors through the Postal Service's inception and expansion, as well as their role in significant national events. <laughs> so that sounds like a, a ton of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why not? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. And uh, he, so he, they're, they're selling Shane's house where they had the swing and everything. And they are both moving into Oliver's house, which is like this restored family home. <laughs> Historical. Right. Historical. And uh and uh he's got this special clock that has to be cranked uh every so often. And uh and he made sure that somebody was doing it when they were gone. And it's never been stopped, the 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 clock. Yeah. And basically Shane hates this house. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a museum. <laughs> yeah. She can't open the windows, which would drive me crazy. She can't open the windows. She can't, uh, she can't, she doesn't have any space for her closet, for her space. I mean, and that would be a big one for me. Mm-hmm. You gotta, you, know, you gotta give your girl some closet space. Yeah. Especially when she's over. got all those shoes. Yeah. That she doesn't put it there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what she, she probably should do is just like convert an entire, cause I'm sure this house has five, six bedrooms. Yeah, at least. You know, convert one of them into that's her closet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would solve all the problems. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it it's a, it's getting heated and uh and you know, I think one of the hard things I can imagine about marriage is that like you have to pick your battles in any kind of family situation. Mm-hmm. But also like e- e- like those little things can kind of germ germinate and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. So like, I, I would think it would be kind of hard. It was like, do I say something? Is this worth it? But like, you know, when do you hit, hit that threshold of like, okay, now's the time. This is right. You know, 
And that's one thing we, we talked about on deliver me a podcast was how well Martha kind of made this, this slow rule. I think Cammy mentioned, you know, in the very opening scene, Oliver has um, the first encounter with Shane's shoes and it's kind of like, Oh, there they are. I'm not out of the way. And then it's just kind of snowballs into this yeah. thing um, as they don't address it. And yeah, it just, yeah. Until it grows. Well, and especially it would be hard because they work together. So there's just yeah. no break. So you like, that's hard when a couple works together. Right. Which is why she needed to step away and get some air, <laughs> which was so like, so just dis- like disheartening to see Oliver like thinking like she had left probably like going back to Holly when she had left them and then mm. Norm reminds him no she's yeah. gone she just needed some air yeah 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 I mean that that is the one part of Saints so Delivered that I never really buy bought that that Oliver would be with uh Holly <laughs> they did, just didn't make any sense like they I don't know. I just, if that's why the four pairs with love is my least favorite. I just found really? her very annoying. Yeah. I found I mean, her I very like annoying all, and I, I didn't, I, I didn't buy stuff. their relationship. I don't know. I mean, I still, it's still, it's still signed, sealed, delivered. So I, I don't hate it, but it is my yeah. least favorite. Yeah. Do you have a least favorite? Uh, <laughs> on the spot <laughs> I, I yeah i don't know if i haven't ranked them in a while i think i know uh-huh. my like most favorites as opposed to my least favorite what's your most favorite it's i don't have a number one like it's more of a, a general grouping but uh-huh. it's funny from paris with love is oh, that's your favorite top, as well uh, as for christmas lost for without christmas. you and higher ground they're sort of like a tier together because yeah. there's like different things about each of them that i appreciate a lot for Christmas is is probably my favorite, and then Higher Ground. Yeah, those are my two favorite, and then uh, probably my other least favorite is One in a Million. I just find it a little boring. Oh, but it's got Lester, and like, <laughs> <laughs> which I love Lester. Yeah, I love Lane really Edwards. So. <laughs> yeah, oh, I love Lane. Yeah, they're all good, and there's not yeah. a bad one. It's just degrees of goodness. <laughs> degrees of, you know, I like that. Degrees of goodness. Yeah. I'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's Elise Murray and her exciting book, Society Girl. Set in the mysterious world of Oxford University secret societies, Society Girl follows Sam, a Duke's estranged daughter, as she attempts to join the most famous club of them all, the Animo Society. Her final initiation challenge is simple. Find a man, convince him she's in love with him, and then break his heart in humiliating fashion. Hardened by her father's rejections, believing that the Animo Society is her key to his love and acceptance, Sam throws herself into making Daniel Best, her father's chauffeur and local musician, fall for her, but she never counted on falling in love with him right back. Fans of Colleen Hoover, Anna Hong, and Mia Sheridan will love Society Girl, a sweeping romance from bestselling novelist and screenwriter Elise Murray. Free for Kindle Unlimited users for a limited time. Go to elisemurray.com slash novels slash Society Girl for more information. Or you can use the affiliate link below. So Norman and Rita are are trying to grow their family, but also getting really involved with Charlie and baby Eleanor, especially Norman. He's getting very attached. Too attached. Too attached. Uh, and uh, it's a challenge. And and it's hard for Oliver because he's having to make a lot of concessions. Like they have a crib <laughs> in the ATL. <laughs> uh, which, you know, I, obviously you want, you want to make sure it's like a safe environment. And especially once you don't want to have like a little toddler toddling around. Right. You know, so this could only be for very, very, very little. Short term. Yeah. Yeah. Because you want it to be safe. But, you know, he's just very by the rules. Always. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and so they have, there was this, uh, there was, what did they call it? The, um, the 2017 mailbox breach. Yes, the Great Mailbox Breach. The Great Mailbox Breach of 2017. And they're looking into it, trying to, to locate these letters to the right people. They have like on cork board, they've got probably what, like about like 20 or something? I believe there was 25 letters. 25. And uh, so they're trying to put them all together. What did you think of that as sort of a construct for the episode? Like like how the which you sorry. know, following the different the different letters and and everything like that for um uh 
for that in the the uh mailbox breach of 2017 <laughs> i would say i just wish we would have had more um uh-huh. like i said earlier i felt like this was definitely a character driven um storyline which i think it had to be to really dive into that but i do think that we we got we lost a little bit like if we mm-hmm. had another 30 minutes mm-hmm. i think we could have really gone into those um but yeah there I was, think was there was oh. a little bit of questioning amongst our group of how old are these characters supposed to be so this happens in 2017 and i then they they so if 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 Rhiannon's if Charlie was a senior, so she would be eighteen, so that would mean she's twenty five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think now. she was supposed to be seventeen. So yeah, approximately then. Yeah, and and Rhiannon Fish is thirty three, so that's like I usually say I give uh, like a ten year window as far as yeah. actress playing ten, or unless there's like makeup or you know prosthetics or whatever. Uh, and uh, so it is within that window, but uh, yeah, so I guess so. She's supposed to be 25 ish, I think that'll be yeah, about yeah, accurate. yeah. Uh, I, I, I was fine with that, I was less fine with the flashback scenes. <laughs> the actors pretending to be 17, I was just kind of like, oh, why didn't they get? I mean, I get it, they're on a budget, but I really, yeah, I really wish they'd gotten. Teenage I feel like Hallmark always does that. They just use the same people and just try <laughs> so to do something bad. with their hair, like give her bangs or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I've just like come to accept it. Like, oh, that's what they're going to do. It'd be pretty <laughs> fun if they could like actually cast younger people. I know. That are around that age. But like you said, when, budget. And then as well as, you know, labor. When they do cast like young actual teenagers, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> they're, this, they're really spending. For this one but not yeah. not for this but it, it was it was it was funny but um we have all of our saying don't get used to bending the postal rules because we share the same mailbox <laughs> <laughs> and uh oliver gets ramon uh, a book of recovered mail on the titanic because he had an- ancestors on there Ancestors of that avoided the Titanic. Oh, that avoided, yeah. That Happy avoided. accident. Yeah. And um, I wish we could have had more Ramon. I, I, I know. really hope he comes back in the um in the next movie too, because we need more. I bet you will. Yeah. So then we get the marriage is like a salad bar. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite lines. Yeah. Uh-huh. And they, uh Norman is spending a lot of time with Eleanor, is getting a little needy. And I yeah, I don't know. I just I just wish they hadn't. I don't um, know. I just don't love the Charlie plot. It's not my favorite. I was surprised actually that she would. Well, I knew she was from the promo photos, but I was surprised that like she was kind of like the center. Well, somewhat center of yeah. this movie that she become almost like a not a main character, but a fairly stronger secondary character. Mm-hmm. That was one thing that definitely surprised me. Yeah. So uh, there's more between Shane and Oliver, and then you say trust the timing. Everything will work out. And that's where I wrote, this is a couple in bed. (laughs) Shocking. (laughs) Hallmark after dark. Yeah. (laughs) Um, They talk about going to a therapist. And uh, and then it says six months later. So there was a little time jump. Mm -hmm. And this is when Charlie tells them uh, that the mailbox breach was her fault. And and I said, in no world do these look like high school students. <laughs> oh, of course not. <laughs> so they were doing a little prank. They were gonna have uh what exactly was going on? They were gonna have it be a there was gonna be like a message and it was gonna be it wasn't gonna be like a they, it was like a bomb so scare, right? Surprise him. They they just wanted to do like a prank. So they threw the clock in, I think with the thought that it would ring and like scare him when he opened the mailbox yeah being and i you know oliver obviously lost his marbles over this but i was like you know what this is so accurate of a teenager like not thinking through Mm -hmm. not understanding the consequences not realizing this is like a federal offense right (laughs) so i thought that was like a really believable thing but yeah then he heard the ticking and was like oh my gosh there's a bomb in this mailbox and then they yeah So one of the letters is from this girl named, uh, or is to this girl named Maria. Mm-hmm. And so they're trying to figure it out. She was evidently at the school and then all of a sudden she disappeared. What's going? So that's part of the, uh, they're looking, she ends up getting arrested. And it's Maria Salinger is the name. 
and uh, they they lose track of her because all juvie records are sealed Mm -hmm. to it. Um, The therapist is Norman's cousin, Calliope. Of course. (laughs) One of his myriad cousins. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And uh, we also get Shane saying that Oliver has a little quirk of interrupting her. I know. And I was trying to think, I'm like, did he have this quirk earlier? I need to go back and rewatch and see if this Mm -hmm. was like a long, like something that they actually had in there or if it just sort of developed um, Mm -hmm. in this particular movie. Because I think that'd be kind of funny if it actually was something he (laughs) kind of did throughout the other Yeah, I never really noticed it before if he did. Yeah, I don't know that I did either, but I wouldn't have been looking for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she's trying to take a, a nap and she just wants to open the darn window and so she tries using the crank from the clock and it breaks and she's devastated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and so then, but then also Oliver makes a mistake because he takes her wedding dress to, uh, to what is it? Swifties clean, dry cleaners, something of that <laughs> to that effect. Yeah. I mean, that's, that is crazy that he didn't ask her, and especially with his personality. Well, we had a conversation about this too on the podcast. And like, I feel like Oliver is, you know, he's such about history and preservation of the yeah. past. Would he really take it to this? And I think, I forget if it was Casey or came to me the point of like, well, you know, it's not an antique yet. So maybe he didn't like to have that, that same mindset. Well, also like, he's just so meticulous that I think he would have all these questions of like, how, how do you want it to be preserved? You know, like all yeah. these sort of questions that he would want to make sure that he got right. Uh, especially if he's doing it as kind of this good will gesture. Yeah. It's, it's probably not the most likely, but, but, uh, but he just wanted to go on and out of the way and put away. So <laughs> yes. And, uh, and so, I mean, and I guess it had been there for over six months. Yeah. That's which a is a long time. time. Yeah. Especially if it's time. bothering you. This is why I'm in big, fa- a big fan when people rent their wedding dresses. I know people, shock uh but you're only gonna wear it that one time mm-hmm. why not just yeah. rent it <laughs> i would save a ton of money and and you know get all your photos and everything and and you're like your daughter is not gonna want to wear your dress like that's just not gonna happen yeah i'm sure it does for some but i don't know that I, i've seen it too much no. at least oh like my sister didn't i think if anyone i think if anyone would wear their mother's wedding dress, it would actually be me. <laughs> Partially because I do actually kind of like it. And uh-huh. second, because I wouldn't have to pay for one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I I could not fit into my mother's wedding dress, so that wouldn't be an option. But, but, uh, but I mean, my mom's wedding dress is very 70s chic. It just would not. <laughs> yeah. I would probably revamp it a little bit because it's got like a high neckline. Yes. Sleeves. And I would probably redo that a little bit, but I like the, the main essence of it. <laughs> but i don't know i just feel like it it, you save so much money you can actually like if you rent your dress you could probably get a nicer dress than you could afford you could get a fancier dress but because you're only renting it and i don't know it just makes sense to me what what do i know (laughs) uh uh uh, and uh so anyway but she's trying to figure out what to do with her dress and um so then he's upset i mean she's upset that he didn't ask her which makes total sense and uh and then we have a scene with this calliope recommending rita and norman as parents which was very sweet mm-hmm. very sweet and uh and then what do you think what do you think is norman's biggest hang up just he's just scared or what do you think his biggest because he's been actually, in the foster system and everything i didn't think it was a hang up i i saw it because I found it very endearing, even though I knew it was like a source of conflict in the relation relationship. Mm-hmm. The way I saw it was that he, because of you know his upbringing, and you know all, you know he has all these cousins. Like family is so important to him. I see him as just having so much love to give. Like he is just ready to be a dad so much that he's like kind of overdoing it with Eleanor because that's how ready he is. Like that's how much love he has to give. Yeah, and I think it also kind of it's easier to sort of focus on what's what's right in front of you yeah as a way of kind of putting off something you don't want to kind of think about you know it's like well i can just do this i don't have to worry about that yeah and just a little bit of norman being norman and being because yeah. <laughs> it does make sense that somebody who had been 
uh, in the foster care like he had that would have sort of a lot of apprehension about parenting. Yeah. So that makes sense. Uh, so it turns out this one of these letters is actually addressed to Charlie mm-hmm. from 2017. It turns out this Barry wrote the letter. And so she, well, she thinks it's Barry. And uh, so she is looking to try to find Barry. But then it turns out, because there was this threesome. There's Barry, Charlie, and Marlon. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so she sets up this meetup with Barry and uh, he he admits that it was actually this, this was also a prank. <laughs> this is a very weird prank. Also, very believe weird goof. I know something similar that <laughs> within my own friend group. I'm not really? gonna believe that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I, I was also younger though. We were younger. We were like yeah, like eighth grade. <laughs> just because I just this is the thing. Like when you do a joke, like. There has to be more funny than mean. And this feels like more mean than funny. Yeah, it does seem to be crossing a, a line at that age. Like yeah. high school. You have to figure out the Venn diagram of mean and right. funny. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a balance there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so turns out the Swifty cleaners are on fire. The dress is kaput. It's sad. And then Oliver finds out about the crank and he's very upset too. Mm-hmm even though she's getting it fixed and everything. And, uh, and uh, I did like it funny, like the old tool family rocking chair. And she's just like, it's like, I live in a museum. I'm married to a museum. <laughs> and you know, she's called all over the, the human antique. So it's, it's very fitting that the antiques will reside in the museum. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies merch store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable hardy or Hallmarkie in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies. I couldn't stand living in a place like that. Like I, I mean, you probably have terrible air conditioning. That's why she needs the window open. Yeah. It sounds nice to live in an old place like that, but I think it would be terrible. There's the charm, but then there's also the reality of things are very old and yeah. probably not great. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And also this added thing of it's, you know, a historical landmark or whatever. So they can't change anything. They can't make the improvements. Yeah. They make it more desirable. To well, it was right here that this is the first time he calls her Miss McElroney. Miss McElroney, yeah. Yeah. In the episode. I was like, oh, <laughs> that was funny and she says uh i'm not leaving i'm just going to get some air but uh but yeah that was the first time he he called her in the episode yeah i'm like oh things are getting heated (laughs) (laughs) so they find the person who wrote this letter to maria miss pillpot and uh, and it's this letter is saying, you know, that she really disappointed her and that she's going to have to turn into the authorities and all this stuff. And uh, Miss Pillpot says, please don't deliver it. Mm-hmm. But uh, I can't bear it if this letter reached Maria. And then Rita says, well, we could deliver two letters. Mm-hmm. So that was nice. Yes, for yeah. sure. And I don't know who that actress is that played Miss Pillpot, but I like her. She's in a bunch of Hallmark. So stuff. she seemed really familiar, and I—I yeah. I haven't looked her up yet because like, the IMDb only has the leads; it doesn't have. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have her. So, but anyway, I I I like her. She's good. Oh no, here it is. Uh, Jennifer Juniper and Jelly and Jelly. It didn't have it when I was preparing my notes, but now it does. Jennifer yeah, she's Lee. really good. I like her. She's a good actress. Uh, anyway. Uh, so they uh, they they're moving forward, and and they find out that uh, that Maria was really this guy uh, Sekumbi Sekumbi 
Okay. And uh, so sh- they start looking under that name, and then they're able to find her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they uh, it turns out that the, when they find this Maria, that she is an adoption counselor or person. Maria. And they are looking for, uh, they have a, a baby to adopt. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that a uh, congenital heart problem would stop anybody from adopting a baby. I mean, it, a severe disability, Down syndrome, I could see maybe for some people, but a heart. I mean, I don't know. I just feel like that's yeah. Relatively I kind of that, that thought as well. Well, I was kind of wondering, like, because I think um, that's when Casey got super emotional. And I was like, to me, it didn't seem like such a big deal. But at the same time, like I've had a congenital heart condition and like my nephew has. And so to me, mm-hmm. it isn't like such a I big deal. I know quite a few. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, especially when it's like an adoption, like you're, you're making a specific choice, mm-hmm. maybe be a little unsure. But I think, you know, the conversation they had after it was more that they were like questioning themselves a bit. As mm-hmm. opposed to like questioning the child. That was sort of the question that Oliver posed to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just think it would have been more interesting if they had made it a little bit more challenging. Like if it had been a Down syndrome baby, like that would be a little bit, a little bit harder in, and, and, and hopefully they would still do it, of course. But um, I don't know. I was just kind of like, what? Yeah, it would, it would have been more challenging, but definitely harder for casting for future movies <laughs> yeah that's fair that's fair okay so this is when when charlie meets with barry and shows that he's married has child and he tells her he wrote us a joke for marlon and then marlon was really the one that had crushed on her all this time yeah mm-hmm. so like i said weird joke it was <laughs> very strange but i guess teenagers do strange stuff sometimes they do <laughs> uh yeah and uh, so then shane tells rita and norman about the baby and uh and that was very sweet and uh and then we also have uh the the therapist saying did you marry him because of his quirks or in spite of them mm-hmm. that was sweet yeah i yeah. really like the therapist yeah she was good i liked her too uh love can make children of us all <laughs> <laughs> uh and and she also says you don't have anything to worry about we don't need to freak out uh, you're just transitioning from, uh, he says, lovers must learn how to be husbands and wives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's one thing I really liked in this movie was that, like that normalization of therapy and like getting help early when the problems are still small and not letting them snowball until mm-hmm. they're nearly unfixable. Because as she yeah. said, this isn't a marriage in trouble. It's just a six month marriage. Yeah. You just work it's it true. Out. Yeah, you don't. That's why when people say, uh, when people say, don't go to bed angry, I disagree with that because, I mean, I'm not married. What do I know? But it seems like to me, sometimes you need to let things cool down. Yeah. You know, like, and then you say something in the heat of the moment that you're going to regret and you Mm -hmm. wish you hadn't said. And so I think that sometimes you just need to like give yourself some time and realize that it's all part (laughs) part of the process of living with another human, you know? Right. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard, and uh, and so yeah, like the normalization of therapy. I like the way you put that. That, that I did like that as well. It was good. That just doesn't have to be anything to be embarrassed about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and so then Oliver lets the clock go silent. It was just it was a sad was a moment. Big moment <laughs> for him. He's got to mourn it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, so then they find out the baby has congenital heart condition. Are you worried that you're adopting the wrong baby or that she's getting the wrong parents? Mm-hmm. And uh, and if people want a, another really good movie about adoption, they should check out The Sound of Hope about the Possum Trot um, uh, community that adopted. They literally adopted every needy child in their entire within like 100 miles unbelievable this whole thing. and i like i don't always love faith-based films um but the nice thing about this one was that it was faith-based more in the sense of it was the community they were a part of more than it's mm-hmm. like about miracles and god and everything it was more about just this community and i was bawling my eyes out and and it was just so like human and 
like flawed people just trying to make this work and trying like making mistakes. I just, it was really good. I highly recommend it. I think, I think anybody listening to this will really appreciate it. Uh, I, I thought it was great. Uh, but yeah, it's, it explores many of these themes, of course, darker, you know, and, and it goes to darker places, but, um, but it's all about these people adopting these, these kids. Yeah. And so anyway, it's really good. But, uh, you know, they say we can't imagine anyone better to be the mother and father of this baby, which is very sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And then everyone starts crying. <laughs> yeah. And so then Marlon shows up, which, which makes, which upsets Oliver because now uh, Shane has been playing mi- matchmaker, basically. Meddling. <laughs> yeah, meddling. And uh, she's just like, sorry. <laughs> and Marlon comes in and the moldy letter that they've been trying to figure out is from him. And he tells her. Uh, and uh, that was, it was sweet. It was nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and Oliver says, I don't understand your preoccupation with matchmaking. <laughs> And uh, and then they say, thank you for going the extra mile. And she says, I'll go anywhere with you, Mr. O'Toole. <laughs> Which is cute. Which is cute. Um, so then later on that evening, she goes home and the swing is set up in the house. In the house. <laughs> that was cute. It was, it was cute. And he's got the seashells, the pen she used, the letter opener. And she's like, oh, no, I married a pack rat. <laughs> <laughs> and he's wearing his green tie. Yes, it's funny because we we made bingo cards for this uh, for this movie, and uh-huh. I almost suggested green tie. And I'm like, Oliver's not going to wear that again. He only wears it when he proposes. Yeah. And then right. I wore it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, perhaps we need a new home. I want to start over, and we get uh, the, uh, the 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 love is and the Corinthians love is patient, kind, bears all, and that was just really sweet. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, and I I can imagine that would be helpful to kind of just start a new start afresh as a couple. Yeah, I think yeah, a new home where they can come together, especially one that is not uh rel- has all these regulations about what you can and cannot do. Right, the yeah. property is definitely <laughs> a good good place for them to go. Yeah, and uh, and then uh, he let's see, he says, I'm asking you to forgive me and build a new life with me, and all if you'll forgive me for expecting the same. So that was very sweet between the two of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are the only man I could ever live with and truly be myself. You Oliver are my home and I am yours. So sweet. Very sweet. Very much so. <laughs> the rocking chair built for two or three. So yeah, the big surprise. Big surprise. Yeah, she's pregnant. Very exciting. Yes. Yeah, I didn't pre-movie, I did not expect the pregnancy announcement at all. Um, but once I was in the movie, the minute she said she needed a nap, I was like, she's pregnant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess maybe I expected it more for the for the Rita and Norman to have a baby yeah. by the end of it. I mean, I guess they kind of did with yeah. this adoption. And uh and then and so it was like, oh, that's a fun, fun, yeah. su- fun surprise. And especially with the next movie being titled To the Moon and Back. It's, you know, sounds oh, like cute. it's focused on some you know, yeah. child storyline or baby storyline. Yeah. I mean, it, it was kind of nice in this one, the fact that it, it did not feel like another finale. Because we know, obviously, there's another yeah. one coming. But Thank goodness. It, <laughs> it was nice <laughs> to know that. Only on it'll, a three-year hiatus to, like, learn, for sure. It, it'll be interesting to see if this next one does also feel like the finale yeah you know? or if they give like kind of something conclusive you know that's something we've kind of said like if it's going to end like just let us know <laughs> so we know yeah. like, is this like, is there always a possibility you know i don't know it's mm-hmm. just nice to know and not always be in this limbo yeah and the situation but yeah so there we go everything got fi- figured out with the letters and charlie says she's sorry and there she ends up with marlin and mm-hmm. And do you think we'll see her again? What do you think that's the end? Charlie? Uh-huh. I think so. <clears throat> Since she's been in two movies now, I have a feeling oh, she'll be sort of like a semi-regular supporting cast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Well, there we go. That is this episode. Let us know what you think in the comments or on Twitter. We'd love to hear. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was perfectly pleasant, but just kind of felt like a filler episode of television. You know, like every season of television, there's always a couple episodes that are feel a little filler. It's kind mm-hmm. of how it felt to me, but it was perfectly fine. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> So I'd probably give it an R rating. I'd probably give it like a 3.5 out of okay. five crowns. Yeah. I give what it about a four, you? Four, four for me. Four. Okay. Yeah. Well, let us know if you're listening, what you think of it and what rating you would give it. We'd love to hear in the comments. And we have lots of Postables coverage that we've done over the years. And of course, you want to check out Deliver Me a podcast. And we'll put all that information in the description as well. And we have a bunch of Postables inspired merch. If you want to take a look at that in our merch store, including a couple new designs, Postables are back shirts and designs. So take a look at that. And uh, Jess, how can people follow you? Um, you can find me on Instagram. I also have Twitter. I don't use it very much. And I honestly don't remember my handle because I changed it. So <laughs> um, let me. I think- we can put it in the description. Yeah, we might need to. But um, you can also follow the podcast on Instagram at Deliver Me a Pod cast um and we also have twitter as well and uh we have started a sub stack which i think on like instagram if you go to the um the bio we have a link tree everything's in there like mm-hmm. literally anything you want one from us it's there that's connected to us so just cool. want to start on instagram and you'll yeah uh, rabbit hole from there Yes. Well, and uh, make sure you check out our Patreon as well. That's the biggest way you can support us. And we have watch longs and lots of fun things going on there. So take a look at that. And like we said, we've interviewed a lot of the cast over the years. There's just a ton of of content. uh, And so make sure to take a look at that. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Bye, everybody.